Hey everyone, it's B, and you're listening to another episode of the In Your Feelings podcast. I wanted today's episode to be rooted in encouragement. I know. At times, life can be really challenging. Growth can be messy, and sometimes the heaviness and the discomfort of the way this world challenges us can get overwhelming. Because of this, at least once a month, I'll post an Instagram encouraging those who follow me to comment something they're going through and dealing with. And I'll comment back and let them know that I'm thinking of them or... I'll leave some advice or some kind words to let them know that they are not alone. But in reading all the comments on those posts, it's it's not lost on me that at any given time, there are so many of you out there who are dealing with things that are just very deeply difficult to navigate. While it may feel like you're alone, there are so many human beings who are also dealing with heartbreak or healing or the weight that comes with growing and trying to become a better person. I wanted to create a podcast episode that you could always come back to on your hard days. One that would encourage you and talk you through whatever you're feeling. And so I hope this podcast episode helps for you to, if anything, just Take a moment for yourself in the midst of all the noise and all the chaos. I hope it encourages you to keep going. And so, firstly, today if your overthinking or your anxiety is getting the best of you, this is for you. I want you to know, before we get into anything, that you are not alone. You don't have to be ashamed of the way your mind works. I know that anxiety and overthinking can make you feel like you are hard to love. I know that it can make you feel like you have to apologize to those in your life. I know that it can tell you lies and convince you that you're not good enough and that the people in your life are exhausted by you and the way you show up here. I know that anxiety triggers overthinking. You overthink the texts you send. You overthink the things those in your life say to you. You wonder if they're being honest. You wonder if they actually care. You wonder if they secretly judge you for the way you think or if they're burdened by you. You overthink certain decisions in your life because you want to make the right choice. You want to do the right thing. You want to ensure everyone around you is happy. You want to ensure that you aren't setting yourself up for disappointment or hurt. And I know that anxiety and overthinking can therefore make you feel alone. I know that sometimes it feels easier to isolate yourself when these thoughts arise. I know that sometimes it feels easier to be on your own so that your anxiety doesn't burden those around you. So that your overthinking doesn't overwhelm anyone but yourself. You don't often open up. You keep your thoughts inside. You leave situations and talk yourself out of texting those you love because you don't want to bother them. You cancel plans and convince yourself that it's better that way and safer that way. You let your anxiety convince you that there is no way out. That feeling this weight is your own fault. But the way your mind has been primed to work and this is something I learned through therapy but the way your mind has been primed to work is not your fault 
Anxiety is a protection method you learn over time as a means of guarding yourself from things you cannot control because in your past, those things hurt you or blindsided you or caused you pain. You are living in a state of defense, always anticipating, always trying to prepare yourself for whatever situation might arise because you've been shown in this life that sometimes the things you never imagined happening could actually occur. Because the truth is people who overthink, people who have anxiety, are often people who have been deeply hurt before. People who have anxiety, people who overthink, are often people who have been blindsided before. People who overthink and people who have anxiety are often people who have been told that they weren't enough or that they were too much. They are often people who have been made to feel wrong for their minds, for their hearts, for the way that they exist here, and it has caused them to further retreat into their thoughts. So if you're feeling anxious today and like you have to apologize for that, I hope you know that you do not have to apologize for the way you have learned how to survive here. You don't have to apologize for the way your mind defends itself because of what it's been through. You don't have to apologize for the way it keeps you alive. So if you are feeling shame today, I hope you know that you are not alone. You're not alone. If you're feeling shame today, I hope you know that you are deserving of Everything good this life has to offer you, no matter what your thoughts tell you. You are good enough for the people who love you. You are good enough for the things you want in this life. You may not be able to stop yourself from anticipating the future or from overthinking certain circumstances or experiences or upcoming versions of your life, but you can remind yourself in these moments to breathe, to try to pull yourself into whatever moment you are in to be present. Look around you, name all of the things you see, breathe deeply and think about three things you're grateful for. Whatever it is, try your best to change your thought patterns when you catch them running away from you. Hold them close. Dismantle them, soothe them, replace them with something calming. Whether that's an encouraging affirmation or a song that makes you feel deeply happy or moved or a comfort movie you watch that helps you to calm the universes in your mind, anything that helps for you to detach from your anxiety, how to let it settle, how to stop scratching at the thought, how to stop pouring your energy into it. Do that. You've got this. Okay, so secondly, if today you're worried that your heart is never going to heal, or you're feeling overwhelmed due to what you have been through at the hands of love, or you're feeling like you want to give up trying to put your heart into this world, this is for you. One of the biggest lessons I had to learn when I was healing from the ending of my four-year relationship was that when it comes to your heart, do not rush your healing. In a society that is so deeply fixated on instant gratification, just be the person who accepts that moving on will not happen overnight. Do not try to dismiss your feelings or sweep them under the rug. Take 
your time. Be gentle with yourself. Because the truth is, if you cared about someone, like, really cared, if you let them leave pieces of themselves littered within your memories and nodded to your heart, you are going to have to come to terms with the fact that you will not move on in an instant. You will slowly let go in so many different ways and in so many different phases. And your healing, your healing will find you in places you never thought it would. You'll let go in the obvious, tangible ways in removing their things from your apartment and taking down the photos from your wall in learning how to sleep in the middle of the bed or teaching yourself how to make just one cup of coffee in the morning. But there are also moments in life, unexpected and jarring, that will come out of nowhere and those will be healing moments too. You will let go of them when you smell their perfume in public and it doesn't make your stomach flip. You will let go of them when your song comes on the radio and it doesn't scratch painfully at the memory of what it felt like to fall in love with them. You will let go of them when You hear that they were out with another person, that they're slowly opening their heart to the world again. You will let go when you decide to do the same. And this doesn't mean that you are fully healed, but this means that you're taking the steps towards your heart's rebuilding. That you are learning how to exist with the memory of them. That you are not trying to rush it out the door, but rather you are learning how to be thankful for it. How to slowly appreciate it for what it has taught you without needing it back. Just be patient with your healing. I promise it's happening even when you cannot feel it. And on that note, Please don't let your past hurt or your past losses convince you that you're not worthy of finding the right kind of love. Don't let them stop you from putting your heart into this world, from staying open. And I know how difficult that is. When you've been hurt before at the hands of another, it can be difficult to convince yourself to risk your heart. It can be difficult to convince yourself that there are those in this world who will keep it safe, who will protect it. When you have been hurt before, despite wanting to experience love again, you can let the what-ifs hold you back. What if you fall for someone and they leave? What if you place your heart in the hands of someone else and they do not want to hold it? What if they don't love you back? But what if they do? What if you take the chance? What if you risk your heart? What if you crash it into someone who genuinely inspires you and they choose you? What if they love you the way you always desire to be loved? What if they make you breakfast in bed on Sundays and hold your broken pieces back together and bring you soup when you're sick and fill your life with the sunniest, most tender kind of happiness? What if they grow you and encourage you and teach you that love was always meant to be soft? That it was always meant to feel the way it feels when you are with them? What if they make you understand why it never worked out with anyone who came before them? What if they stay? And what if they do leave? 
What if there does come a time where they cannot be what you need? What if you outgrow one another? What if you evolve into two people who cannot beat the odds? What if love changes? But what if there is still gratitude there? Gratitude for the way in which they stretched your heart into what it ended up becoming. Gratitude for how they help for you to find clarity in what you desire and what you strive to find in the next person life gifts you. Does that make it any less important, any less rich? Does that make it any less worthy of being felt? Of having the kind of depth and connection that might not last forever, but that breeds the kind of lessons and knowledge and hope that will. Don't be afraid to follow your heart. Don't be afraid to try for something. There's so much beauty waiting for you on the other side of your healing and on the other side of your what ifs. And if you're doubting that today, I hope this reminder encouraged you to believe in a future you have yet to feel. Before we get into the rest of the podcast, I did just want to thank Wonder Wellness, who are the sponsors of today's episode. Wonder makes the world of cannabis simple to understand and easy to experience for everyone. They make low-dose, approachable cannabis forms that are innovative yet intuitive. Their products are designed to be easy to use, fun to explore, and conducive to living well. Exploring cannabis can be complicated and quite intimidating and it's nice to know that these products were dreamed up with the intention of mediating that and making the process of exploring this space feel inviting and enjoyable. What I really love is that Wonder was created for those who have never experienced cannabis before or who haven't in a long time, which is really reassuring if you're slowly figuring out what works for you and what you enjoy. So whether you're trying to add a little more happiness and laughter to your life, or you're looking for ways to sharpen your focus and concentration and be a little more productive, or you're simply just looking for a means of creating moments of relaxation and serenity in your day, whatever your journey looks like, Wonder Wellness can help you get started. Last but not least, I do just want to disclaim that these products are intended for persons 21 plus in Illinois and individual experiences may vary. If you'd like to learn more about Wonder Wellness, you can do so at wonderwellness.co. All right, next, if you're finding it difficult to love yourself today, to be kind to yourself today, this is for you. Self-love is such a difficult process to navigate, not only because it takes time and patience and tenderness, but because there's also this shame that seems to grow within us when we cannot find it. We are constantly sold this idea of self-love. It's relayed to us on social media and in advertising and within the music we hear and the shows we watch. The world is constantly saying just love yourself and so when we can't or when it's difficult, we feel sad or guilty for not being able to achieve that or see ourselves the way others see us. It can be deeply confusing. But the truth is, we have all been hurt and we have all dealt with things that have convinced us that we are hard to love. And we deal with so much comparison on a daily basis. It is understandable that we've in a way grown distant from our own souls, from our own hearts, and from feeling worthy. 
it is a very human thing to struggle with. Something I always tell myself on days where I can't find that light within myself is that I deserve to give myself the same love I give to everyone around me. I remind myself that I am worthy of my own respect, of my own care, of my own kindness. If you were to really think about all of the ways you love others, the ways you forgive and celebrate them, all of the energy you expend being kind to others, being a good friend, being the kind of human being they can depend on, if you were to think about the ways you encourage the people in your life, the ways you Forgive them for their mistakes, the ways you motivate them to embrace their flaws, the ways you show them just how much they can be loved, not only when they are shining examples of who they want to be, but when they aren't themselves or when they're going through difficulty. If you think about all of the ways you love others unconditionally and unapologetically, the way love pours out of you for everyone around you, how tender and how patient and how forgiving and how kind you are to those you care about, why don't you do that for yourself? We show up so deeply for those in our lives and we forget to show up for ourselves. We love others so unconditionally and we forget to give ourselves that same love. We forgive others for being human, for making mistakes, and we rarely do the same for ourselves. We speak kindness into those we love. We celebrate them and encourage them, and we only ever want for them to have the sunniest, most beautiful kind of happiness in their lives, and yet we don't afford ourselves the same tenderness. We don't celebrate and encourage ourselves. We have the capacity to be our own safe havens. We have the capacity to be our own home. We have the ability to encourage and care and love, but somewhere along our journeys, we convinced ourselves that we weren't worthy of it, that we didn't deserve it. So this is your reminder. You are deserving of the love you give to everyone else around you. You are deserving of your forgiveness. You are deserving of your grace and your kindness and your tenderness. It's time to take all of that belief and invest it into yourself. It's time to see your own worthiness. And it's also, I have to say this, but it's also time to forgive yourself. Our pasts can bring up feelings of shame. And that shame can often make you love yourself less because you are seeing yourself through the lens of who you used to be. If that is one of the reasons why you find it difficult to be kind to yourself, why you find it difficult to care for yourself, I just want to remind you that life is really hard and there is no perfect way to execute our existence here. It is never as black and white as we think it is. There is no guideline on how to be a human being who is dealing with the grittiness of what it means to simply live and love and make mistakes. We all have been versions of ourselves that we wouldn't necessarily clap for now. We have all been the person who hurts or who makes the wrong choice or who can't show up. This doesn't make you a bad person. This makes you human. So a step towards loving yourself is forgiveness. Forgive yourself for what you had to do in order to kill your sadness. Forgive yourself for how you settled or allowed yourself to be treated. 
forgive yourself for the ways in which you didn't fight for who you were becoming. Forgive yourself for the ways you tried to catch your footing. When you call it all by its name, when you truly face all that it was, not with a desire to change it and not with regret, but with tenderness for what has come and gone, for what cannot be reversed. Forgiveness affords you this ability to reframe your past. It affords you the opportunity to stop seeing your present self through that lens and you learn from it rather than letting it hurt you or demean you or belittle you. Instead, you take the lessons and you allow for them to inspire you into standing up for who you are and who you want to be. Acceptance is love and I hope you can accept yourself a little more today, even in the smallest of ways. Okay, last but not least, if you feel like you're falling behind today, this is for you. Please, if I promise if there is anything I was so grateful for learning in my 20s, it was to just trust the timing of my life. So please just trust the timing of your life. You don't have to have it all figured out by a certain age and you don't have to chase a version of success that does not inspire you. All you have to do is learn about yourself. You have to keep doing the work, not just physically, but emotionally too. You have to learn about who you are on a foundational level. You have to understand what you deeply value, what ignites your soul, what makes you want to get up in the morning, and you have to choose that every single day. You have to stand up for it. You have to leap towards that hope even when it's scary and even when you're the only one dreaming in that direction. Because this is what I've learned. There is no point in moving quickly towards a life that you don't want. There is no point in doing everything right if you are just going to end up unhappy. So take your time. You are not failing at life. You are not falling behind because you're moving at a different pace than those around you. You are not odd or delusional if your dreams do not look like the one society told you to have when you were younger. You are out here and you are making your life your own. You are growing into your future. Don't ever be ashamed of that. And also, I, I just want to remind you that progress looks different for every single human being. And there are so many things you have to overcome. There are so many signs in your daily life that prove that you are doing better than you think you are. And you may not even recognize them because society has placed such an emphasis on a certain singular version of what it means to be successful or happy or full of potential. And so this is your reminder that mental progress is progress too. Your mental progress deserves to be celebrated just as much as your physical progress in this world. If you're healing old thought patterns, if you're learning how to cope in healthier ways, if you're figuring out what happiness truly and, and deeply means to you, that is progress. If you are figuring out what you deeply want from life, if you are working through all of that and learning how to trust yourself and how to trust the process, that is something to celebrate. That is something to honor. 
that is a form of success that stays with you longer than any material metric of achievement. Let this be your reminder that sometimes the most formative kind of growth happens in the quiet, happens in the dark. Try your best to turn down the noise the outside world will constantly throw your way. Don't compare yourself to those who are on a different journey than you. You are doing enough. You're doing your best. You are working every single day to grow yourself into a better person, a version of yourself that you are proud of And that is incredible. And that is success. That is productivity. That is progress. That is something to celebrate. Trust that your dreams are going to come true. And trust that the things you want in your life are going to find you. The right opportunities will stay. And the right things will connect. They will always, always connect. So keep going. You've got this. All right. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I I really hope it helped. And I hope you can listen to it on the days where you're struggling with any of the things I spoke about. Any of the things we dove into. I hope that you can refer back to this episode and feel encouraged and feel seen and feel heard in what you're going through no matter when you play it, no matter what moment you need it. Until next time, I hope you know that you are so loved and so appreciated.